A chipotle is a smoked hot chili pepper commonly used in Mexican cooking, but much more applicable here, it's the name of the second largest chain of Mexican restaurants behind only Taco Bell. They currently have over 2,500 locations located across every contiguous US state. There's over 400 of them in California alone. The reason I'm talking about chipotle today is because the last five years for them have been outrageously eventful, possibly more so than any other restaurant. Within that span, they have experienced a significant decline in both sales and reputation. You may remember all these foodborne illness outbreaks linked to their restaurants, but they've made what I would consider to be a full recovery. By almost any measure, they're actually doing better right now than ever before. The simplest, most impactful representation of this would be their stock price. In August of 2015, Chipotle stock was trading at a then high of almost $750. Within months of that, it was almost cut in half to the $400 range that was directly following the big outbreak, leading to early 2018 when it was trading at around $250. And now today, it is approaching $1,200. I told you, that is an eventful five years. So today, I want to take a look at the rise and fall and rise again of Chipotle. You know, compared to most food chains of this size, Chipotle is surprisingly new. I am actually older than Chipotle because it only goes back to 1993 when Steve Ells opened the first location in Denver. Now, Steve Ells has been passionate about cooking and food for practically his entire life. When he was young, I can't imagine he was unlike Remy from Ratatouille, just talking about cooking and trying to discover new flavor combinations. He ended up going to culinary school, and by the age of 25, he was living out his dream by working for a respected chef at a high-end restaurant. Again, much like Remy, but that's where the comparisons end, because Steve Ells came up with a solid idea for a new restaurant. He took note of all the taco and burrito restaurants in his area and figured that he could do the same thing, but a more high-end gourmet version of it. He took out a loan and convinced his father to invest a considerable amount of money and used it all to open the first Chipotle in the summer of 1993 near the University of Denver. Things weren't the best at first. He had converted it from an old 800 square foot ice cream shop, so the size and the layout weren't ideal, but there was enough good to outweigh the bad. He would come up with his own own fancier twist on the ingredients, serve them in higher quantities, Chipotle has always been known for their larger burritos, but he was still able to keep the prices under control. All the main items were under $5. In fact, his unique balance of quality and pricing made him somewhat of a pioneer in the now popular industry of fast casual dining. It's basically trying to find the happy medium between fast food and casual dining, and Chipotle was one of the earlier ones to do it. In the words of Steve Ells, I wanted to show that food that was served fast did not have to be a typical fast food experience. In the following years, he found additional investors and was able to subtly expand Chipotle into a chain of locally popular restaurants in the Denver area. Then, in early 1998, when there were about 14 locations, McDonald's became involved when they bought partial ownership of Chipotle. It was a minor stake at first, but by 2005, they had become 90% owner of it, though Steve Ells did remain in charge as Chipotle CEO. As you would imagine, this is when their expansion was taken to that next level. It is not hard to see how having a fast food giant like McDonald's behind them would be helpful for their business. Aside from the actual money that McDonald's provided, they were useful in selecting which areas they should open new restaurants, they had a strong distribution system that could be utilized, they were helpful in securing better suppliers, there were more advantages than I can even mention here. But in early 2006, when the Chipotle chain had grown from 4 to about 500 locations with McDonald's involvement, McDonald's no longer wanted to be involved. They instead wanted to focus their attention on their core McDonald's brand, and really, it doesn't seem like the two are getting along very well. Obviously, the two brands are different, and because of that, it doesn't appear that the managers from the two ends ever shared the same vision for Chipotle. Considering how much the brand has exploded since, I can't imagine McDonald's is too happy with that decision, but at the time, those reasons were motivated 
than enough for them to sell their stake in Chipotle to the public. Meaning, by the end of 2006, Chipotle was completely free from McDonald's, trading independently on the stock market. And from there, Chipotle continued growing, I think faster than anyone could have predicted. Probably one of the bigger reasons for it would be their emphasis on fresh ingredients and, as they put it, food with integrity. What they mean by that is over the years, they had grown increasingly concerned with where their food comes from. I recommend that you look more into the details of it, but they became known for their fresh, responsibly sourced ingredients. To best show their success over this time, I'm just going to show you some of the key figures from their first 10 years apart from McDonald's. That 2006 IPO priced the stock at $22 per share, which had gone up to $42 at the end of the first day of trading. From there, there were some ups and downs, but by 2015, it was over 700. When looking at their number of locations, it had consistently increased to over 2,000. When you're opening so many new locations like this, you have to be careful of your comparable store sales, because it wouldn't make sense to open so many new restaurants if the existing ones were losing sales. And amazingly, even though they had quadrupled in size over that 10 year span, that was never an issue for Chipotle. Their comparable store sales growth remained positive during this time. It seemed like no matter how many they opened, it was never enough because the demand was always there. It may have been too high in fact, because one of their biggest issues over this time was the fact that their lines were too long. I know I'm not the only one who has waited far too long to get their Chipotle, but as far as problems go, it's not the worst one to have. Considering they were opening more locations and selling more at each location, their overall sales jumped from $800 million to $4.5 billion over this time. And every one of these years was profitable, netting almost $500 million in 2015 alone. I don't know how any of this could have realistically gone any better. It really did seem like they were unstoppable. Then, the trouble started. The first nationally reported story that got everyone's attention was in October and November of 2015. It was this terrible E. coli outbreak in 11 different states that was connected to many of their restaurants. 55 people got sick, 21 of which were admitted to a hospital. Not surprisingly, the public became very apprehensive about eating at Chipotle. Then, to make things worse, at a terrible time, right when everyone was scared, in December of that same year, they were linked to a norovirus outbreak that affected 136 people in Boston. For this one, it looks like the manager at a Chipotle went against company policy and forced a sick employee to stay at work. That person then helped pack an order for a college basketball team, and that team ended up getting sick with the virus. Now, these weren't the only outbreaks, but they were the big ones that received what many would consider an abnormally high amount of media attention. I'm sure that most of us saw the reports when it happened, but what fewer people may realize is just how much the company was hurt by them. The outbreaks occurred right at the end of 2015, so 2016 is where they saw the biggest impact. That year, their same store sales decreased for the first time, and it was by 20%. Their overall sales decreased for the first time by about $600 million, which of course led to lower profits as well. It also eventually led to the resignation of their founder, Steve Ells, as CEO in 2017, who, as we've seen, had been the head of Chipotle from the very beginning. Then, to complicate things even further, when the public had them under a microscope, looking for any kind of outbreak or breach in food safety, it happened again. In July of 2018, 647 people got sick, likely from eating at a Chipotle in Ohio. The restaurant wasn't keeping their food at safe temperatures, so that's probably what made everyone sick. At that point, I think the public had lost all of their patients with Chipotle because this sort of thing just kept happening. From 2015 to 2018, a combined 1,100 people were sickened from these outbreaks, and that led to a $25 million federal fine in 2020, which happens to be the largest fine ever in a food safety case. But like I've said, they have already made a full recovery from it and are pretty much doing better than ever. Despite the outbreaks happening through 2018, 2016 was really their only bad year, and 
I have a few reasons behind this recovery. The obvious one would be increased food safety measures. I mean, I would sure hope so. They hired food safety consultants, they're inspecting their restaurants more often, all the stuff that you would pretty much expect following these types of incidents. Another factor would be strong marketing, because they had to get the word out there about their food safety and their real ingredients. They quickly launched their most expensive marketing campaign ever that included their first nationally broadcast commercials in five years. They also hired a new CEO that's been making some big changes. When Steve Ellis left, he was replaced by Brian Nickel, who was actually the CEO of Taco Bell before this. Some of his changes include moving their headquarters from Colorado, where it started, out to California. His hope is that it would shift the culture of the company and bring them closer to their competitors. On top of this, they've been introducing some new menu items, such as their queso dip that actually took them a few attempts. I realize that fast food places introduce new menu items constantly, but it's uncharacteristic for Chipotle. Whenever I go there, I get the burrito bowl every single time. I see it from the people around me too. There's typically not much variety happening at Chipotle. Definitely not when you compare it to a place like Taco Bell. So these few new menu items have been big, and it appears that they've been working. Another factor would be their emphasis on online orders, which now account for about a quarter of their total sales. Their new app and loyalty program have been effective. You can now earn points that you could redeem for free meals. Deliveries coming from their app and their new Chipotle lane have helped reduce the lines inside. And maybe the most important part of their comeback has been a simple lack of outbreaks. I know, the bar set pretty low on that one, but time has passed, people have forgotten about them, and they don't seem to be much of a factor anymore, so people are less freaked out about eating there. It's pretty clear that many people want to eat there, so they're going to do it as long as there's nothing actively keeping them away. Let me know in the comments what you think of everything that's been happening with Chipotle. These have been crazy times, but it's looking like they may have been able to isolate these troubles and put them in the past. Let me know if you think that's the case. And I'm curious, how have you felt about eating at Chipotle? What I mean is, back when the outbreaks were happening, were you apprehensive or did you stop going there altogether? Because based on these numbers, it looks like that was the case for many people. And if you were one of those people, how do you feel about them today? Most have returned by now, so what brought you back? Had enough time passed without an outbreak? Was it the Chipotle rewards? Maybe it was the queso that did it? And what do you see for the future of Chipotle? Are they strong enough to continue growing or are they too big as it is? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.